Hello people, so I want to quickly give you the energy of various signs for all ascendants just before we go into more details in the other podcasts. So <clears throat> here's something you will notice in every sign which is opposite to a sign by the seventh place. For example, this is the Aries ascendant. We see here the exaltation debilitation is reversed in opposite signs. For example, this is Aries. And this is uh, Libra. In Aries, the sun is exalted, Saturn is debilitated. In Libra, it's just the opposite. Saturn is exalted, sun is debilitated. See, notice the patterns here. Same way in Taurus and Scorpio. In Taurus, the sun and Rahu are exalted. Ketu is debilitated, which is ruled by Venus. Here in Mars and Ketu sign, Ketu is exalted and moon and Rahu are debilitated. What is exalted in the opposite sign becomes debilitated in the other one. Take, uh, these are neutral, 3 and 9 are opposite, they don't have exaltation, deviation. let's leave that. If you take even uh, the sign of 4, sign of Cancer and sign of Capricorn, they're again opposites. The Cancer sign has Jupiter as exalted, Mars debilitated. And the sign of Capricorn has Mars exalted and Jupiter debilitated. Again, 5th and 11th are again neutral, like 3 and 9, that is Leo and Aquarius are, have, don't have any exaltation and debilitation in them. These four signs, as you can see, have no exaltation and debilitation. Now, sign of uh, Virgo and the sign of Pisces, again, they are opposite to one another. In any chart, in any ascendant, this will be the same case, okay? I want to get you the energy of how this works, how this dynamic plays out. This is going into the refined aspects of ascendance, the themes of life you already saw, how it plays out. But once we understand this from the soul perspective, then we know what to do with it. It's a, you have to understand that there's always the conscious will, there's always a conscious way you can conduct it, conduct your life. And this is to help you understand that. Once you understand the energies, then you can understand and where it's placed, which house it's placed as per the ascendant, then you understand how to govern your life better. So in his sixth house of Virgo, which is ruled by Mercury, Mercury is exalted, Venus is debilitated. Right opposite, which is Pisces, Venus is exalted, Mercury is debilitated. Can you see the opposites playing in each one of these houses? In the first and seventh, in the second and eighth, in the fourth and tenth, in the sixth and twelfth. All of these are opposite exaltation and debilitation. This is our meaning. Now we'll see why it has a meaning and what okay in the sign of aries this is not the house mind you we're not talking about ascendance now we are talking about the energy of the signs itself so within the energy of science the first one the aries stands for attention direction towards self now aries libra is about attention direction these two we are talking in terms of opposites now so the Aries is attention direction is self. That's why sun is exalted. Sun is about self. Sun is not so much about others. It's the power of the soul. It's individuation. Saturn is debilitated because Saturn is all about others. Now if you go to Libra, it's the first sign that begins with the others. So Saturn is exalted because Librans want to do everything for the others. You can check out the, my video on the Libran ascendant themes. Right? They're all about others. So where the attention direction goes towards others, Saturn automatically becomes exalted. And Sun becomes debilitated because you are not going, looking so much at yourself, but you are looking for focus on your attention on the others. Something similar to NLP over here. So let's come to Taurus and Scorpio opposites. This I call it as okay. This in house signification it can mean number of things. We are talking about sign signification. In this sign of Taurus, which is ruled by Venus, wealth is exalted. Wealth of self, Taurian energy is focused more on wealth of self, not towards others, because it is ruled by Moon and Rahu, which is Rahu is a bhog karaka, so it is more focused on materialistic aspects. So is Moon. And Ketu or the South Node is all about dissolution. It's all about Moksha Karaka. It is liberating you from the themes of materialism. 
So spirit, spiritualism and materialism cannot coexist where one thing gets exalted and another thing gets debilitated as a natural consequence. So in Taurus, this gets exalted, this is wealth of self. In Scorpio, which is ruled by Mars and Ketu, this is, a, this is for the wealth of others. Even in house signification, it means wealth of others. Eighth house is of wealth of others, your in-laws. This is wealth of self, what you make. This is for the wealth of others and wealth as in not just money, it's the well-being of others. That's why it gives more power to occult because you can heal others. So Ketu becomes exalted because it's a moksha karaka. It's about giving away. This is about getting. This is about giving away. In number three and number nine opposites, one is knowledge. Even number three ruled by Gemini. Mercury stands for the mind, intellect, reasoning, logic. So in Mercury, in this house of three and nine, which are again opposites, seventh places from one another, all of these. So knowledge becomes as intellect. The higher self of knowledge in the ninth becomes wisdom. So higher self of intellect is always wisdom. It always wants to go towards this. And if you have too much of wisdom here, and number three comes over here, which will be just the reverse of this, probably in Libra, it will be the reverse of this. Yes, seven, eight, nine will come here and three will come here. So it's the wisdom you have innately inside yourself, which is seeking more of intellect. You see, the seeking and going towards will differ from ascendant to ascendant. But the theme of the sign remains pretty much the same. Number three, knowledge made intellectual. In number nine, knowledge is made into wisdom, the higher self. So in number four and ten, it's the nurturing. I call it the nurturing of self, the nurturing of others. People call this work, Karmasthana, 10th house, and this is home place. But what does it mean in essence? This, why is Jupiter exalted here and Mars is debilitated here? For nurturing of self, you don't need aggression and drive. It's a nurturing energy where mother gives the wisdom, mother gives the caring, mother takes care of all the nurturing parts of the, well, emotional, mental, physical parts. There Jupiter gets exalted because Jupiter wants to give. Jupiter is the giver. That's how it becomes exalted in the sign of Cancer. So nurturing of self, and the opposite house of that, the higher self of nurturing of self is nurturing of others. What do you do through work? You nurture others, you take care of others, you take care of corporations, companies, your teammates, business. You're doing something for others. Mass becomes exalted here because mass has, gives the drive to Saturn and Saturn again like I said even in Libra it wants to give wherever it wants to give to others you will see Saturn becoming exalted Saturn is a giver for the other people the common worker so in Libra it starts even the house of Capricorn which is ruled by Saturn mass becomes exalted because mass wants to gain that energy and attention towards self where can mass gain attention the maximum in a public setting, in office, business, world, outside. That's how mass becomes exalted here. Here you don't need so much as wisdom. Wisdom you have got from here and you have brought it here. The higher self of number 4 is number 10. What you gain from here, you bring it here and give it off to others. See, we don't come into this world with anything. We take it something and we give something. The same thing that we bring in, we give it to others. So number 5. I call it the creative self in a similar way. Opposite to that, Leo is Aquarius. So number five, where sun sits, is creativity for self. Again, sun being all about self. That's why it's exalted here. Creativity, romance, education, love, everything you're doing for self here in the fifth, in the sign of Leo. In the sign of Aquarius, you're giving it all to others. See, again, it's ruled by Rahu and uh, Saturn giving to others. Everywhere others are there is what Saturn believes in. Saturn believes in giving it to others, not for the sake of self. If you go for it selflessly, here's the secret, Saturn will help you a lot. So Saturn is about giving it to cre your creativity to others. It's bringing creativity, both are highly creative signs, but they are about giving to others in Aquarius, they are for the sake of self in Leo. 
Now when you come to uh, Virgo and Pisces, again opposite signs. It's about learning through mind because sixth, sixth place is also a place of daily work, calculative, working with others. Enemies, what are enemies in general? Enemies is somebody who you clash against. So you're learning, it's a learning basically. You're learning through real life, not learning through textbooks. Interaction with the world. Here you go within because you're learning through the heart. So learning through the mind because Mercury is exalted, learning through the heart, Venus is exalted. So this is my short take on the learning aspects of how the soul comes to learn in different houses in different ascendants. The same arrangement you can carry and check it out for yourself for the remaining ascendant. It will be pretty much the same. For each sign it will be pretty much the same. If one comes here or here or here anywhere, it will still be the same. It will carry the same energy to the aspects of that particular house. Try it out and see for yourself. Let me know what you think in comments.